Hi, it's Nell and welcome. Happy New Year. I just wanted to show you this rose. It is blooming just on the other side of my fence in mid-January. Yes, this is the first video I'm filming for 2017 and what better subject than Lucky Bamboo Care. It's a great way to start out the new year. I'm going to start it out by saying that Lucky Bamboo is not really a bamboo. The um, canes, stems, or stalks, whatever you prefer to call them, just look like bamboo, but it's a great marketing name. It is actually a Dracaena, Dracaena sandoriana, or the other, the other um, species that goes by is Brawnii, Dracaena sandoriana, or Dracaena brawnii. Now this is a plant that goes both ways and what I mean by that is it, it'll grow in the long term in water and it'll grow in the long term in soil. It's very versatile that way. But for the purposes of this video I'm going to talk about growing it in water because that is um, sort of the unique and novel way that it is grown and it is a great plant for beginning gardeners. And this is a plant like succulents and air plants. It's just really come into a popularity in probably the last 15 years or so. I lived in San Francisco. I moved there in 1984 and I lived just above Chinatown and I don't remember it seeing it all that much, if at all, at that time, but it's a very popular plant now. And it is found in many forms and many different types of arrangements, this being two of them. And the number of stalks have meaning. I don't know exactly what they all mean. That's not my area of expertise. Um, I do know that you should avoid the, the number four because that's really, really bad luck. Three is very, very desirable. It is happiness, long life, and wealth. And I keep this in my guest room. And who does not want those three things? And the color of the ties have meaning too. Red is another very popular color for ties, but mine is gold, and gold is the color of abundance. And now we're gonna move on to the care, the meat of the video. Um, as I said, I keep this in my guest room and I keep this in my bedroom. Um, I don't grow it outdoors. I just want to start by saying that. I'm just out on my patio because the light is beautiful out here. So but they are grown indoors. And speaking of light, they like nice bright light. Now though this is one plant that will tolerate low light it just won't grow as much. But what you want to avoid is any strong hot sun because it will burn. For instance, I have this in the window of my bedroom now. I have a fairly good sized ledge. It's a north exposure and it's fine for now, but come summer or even toward the end of spring here in the desert, in the Arizona desert, the glass is going to be hot and that would burn the plant. So I'm going to have to move the plant. And if you're getting a lot of strong light from one side, you might want to rotate the plant every month or so, just so it gets light from all the way around. I'm a bit distracted because the rose I showed you at the beginning is now being enjoyed by a hummingbird. So I'm like, oh, 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 okay video. Um, now we're going on, on to water, the growing medium that I have this plant in now and there are varying opinions on it. Some people change their water every week or so. Some people don't change it at all. I tend to change the water about every, every, every two months. But what I can tell you about the water for sure is that if you are getting any kind of brown tipping, a lot of brown tipping on your, on your Lucky Bamboo, you know, because it is a a Dracaena and they are very susceptible to tipping, it could be because your water is too hard. And that is the case of the water here in Tucson. It has a lot of minerals in it. It's hard. So I use distilled water for my Lucky Bamboo. 
And I also wanted to tell you that Lucky Bamboo can also grow in pebbles or glass chips too, if you prefer to put those in the dish for a little decorative look. It's just a little harder to change, to change the water, but not impossible by any means. And in terms of the container size, you want it about an inch bigger or so all the way around just so that it gives the roots some room to grow. This is getting a little tight in here. I'm probably going to have to up the container size a bit. It doesn't have to be taller, you know, because the roots are way down there. It just has to be a little bit wider at some point. And you can see where I have the line, you know, the line of the well water is here because that's where the roots are. I don't need to have the water up to here because there are no roots up here. I, I just keep it right about there. So you want your container in proportion to the size of the arrangement or the size of the stalks. If I had stalks that were way up here, I would probably want to go with even a little bit taller, taller, taller container just to anchor it in and hold it in. I have never fertilized my Lucky Bamboo. These are fairly new. This one I've had for quite some time, a few years. I've never fertilized it. And uh, that's what I've read. A lot of people don't fertilize it. But I was at the Asian International Market the other day and they just happened to have a box of this fertilizer in the checkout line because they sell so much Lucky Bamboo. And this is called Super Green. And it is formulated especially for Lucky Bamboo and other plants that grow in water. So if you are someone who likes to fertilize, this is the specific fertilizer formulated for Lucky Bamboo. And moving on to pests, mine has never gotten any, but like other Dracaenas, it might be susceptible to spider mites, first of all followed by mealybug, thrip, and scale. All right, so now we're gonna move on to some do nots. That's how we're gonna wrap this up. Do not put it in direct hot sun. Do not use tap water if your tap water is hard. And do not let the water dry out. Well, do not let the water dry out. Do not <laughs> <laughs> let the water completely evaporate or dry out of the container that it's in. It's, it, seems, it seems very logical, but it has happened to this plant. This plant um, got knocked over in the car on the way here. It was over a nine hour drive, so my cat knocked it over. I, I didn't see, so by the, by, by the time we got here, it almost dried out. And then um, I was traveling this summer, and the person who was taking care of it did not keep water in it, so I came home and it had dried out. So it has come back. I've had to, I had to, I had to take some of the heads off, and they have resprouted and come back. But um, I lost some canes too because they completely dried out. So do not let yours dry out. And at this time of year in the winter, do not keep it right near a heating vent where the hot air is going to blow onto it. No, 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 that's not good for it. Conversely, in the summertime, do not keep it where like the cold air conditioning will blow onto it either. Now, you might want to clean it off every once in a while, so don't let too much dirt collect on it. You might have to take a brush or you know a rag or just take it to the sink and hose off all that dirt and dust because the plant has pores and it needs to they need to breathe so as you can see lucky bamboo is just as easy to take care of as can be just add the water and it will be happy as always, I thank you for all your likes and your subscribes and your comments. I really appreciate them. I have a lot more videos coming your way this year, so stay tuned for those. And then let's get out of the garden or into our home gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. I thank you for watching as always, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.